Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's video is going to be about my experiences with the new Ingenuity Precision Powder Trickler that is an upgrade to the um, existing Auto Trickler powder dispensing system. Um, and I'm going to go over a, a few things here before the uh, my main review video footage kind of starts rolling. Um, I sort of forgot uh, when I was uh, first getting the thing and uh, putting it together and everything, I sort of forgot to make the initial assembly video regarding the, um, uh, like the stepper motor and, and um, everything. But there's um, videos on Ingenuity Precision's website showing you how to assemble all this. It's not really that hard. Uh, one thing that I did not know uh, that wasn't made really clear to me when I first ordered the, the trickler was it does not come with its own motor. You actually have to take the motor off of your existing auto trickler, uh, trickler, the stepper motor, and that is what is used here. Um, so, I was, uh, you know, I didn't know that when I first got the trickler and started uh, assembling it and everything. I'm like, well, how in the world does this thing work? Because, you know, I don't see any wires or anything. And then turns out that's that's what you do, which, you know, is not a not a huge deal. Um, and uh, and it does work really, really well. So uh, and and I talked to Paul at Ingenuity Precision, who uh, designed and makes this thing. And he said, you know, it is intended to be simply an upgrade to the all to the auto trickler system that you already have so you should have all the parts and um you know as far as i know that's the only thing that this thing can work with um so anyway i just wanted to put that out there uh starting out that might be the reason you already see it kind of configured like this uh, before i even start but i did touch on a few other points that i've not seen many people talk about as far as um where to drill the hole in the top cover on your scales and that sort of thing so uh then uh later on in the video i do some um, um powder dispensing timing tests and uh show you how well it works and it is pretty amazing it's um uh, it's it it is not super cheap i would not say you know at the current time the price of these things run somewhere around 360 dollars and uh, it comes with three different discs uh, that go inside the trickler itself. Um, I sort of think, you know, for the price point that this thing comes in, I, I sort of think it should maybe come with all the discs that you would possibly need for any powder or at least an additional disc for some ball powders. But I think in... Uh, the defense of Ingenuity Precision, he is still sort of getting caught up on all the massive amounts of orders that he has for these things. So that could be part of the reason that he's not including more discs right now because he actually, he doesn't have them in stock. The things are selling out so fast that uh, best I can tell, he's a, he's a, a one-man show or at least a very small shop with not a tremendous amount of help. So it's, it's, it's um, keeping him burning the candle at both ends, so to speak, just to try to keep up with the demands that he has. Uh, but he was super helpful when I talked to him on the phone. And um, anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this video short here and start getting into the actual setup footage and the use of the trickler. Okay, so here's the easiest way I've found to locate the hole in the wind shroud of your uh, stock a and fx 120i scale what you want to do first is you know you, you likely already have your um, pan um, and the locator for the pan already on your scale so you want to bring your um, ingenuity trickler over here to where it's still you know plainly going to dispense in the pan but uh, but obviously be far away from the funnel that's coming down off your V3 if what you're using is a V3. So that is the first step. And now let me uh, reposition the camera. Okay, now the next step you want to do is to try not to move your stand. Let's see, I'll probably go ahead and take my, my cup out of the 
scale. Don't move the trickler, just pull the tube out. And now, after you do that, you could sit your the cover back down on your scale and you can actually, uh, let's see, we need to, uh, all right, I'm not going to, I'm gonna try, make sure not to move the, um, the base because that's what's locating everything right now. You wanna take your little disc out of the um, Ingenuity trickler, which is real easy to do. You can be sure not to bend it or anything, obviously. Now we're gonna put that back in now, what you can do is you can look down through the hole um, that the um, that the tube would have been going through. And another thing you could do is take a good flashlight and like shine down on that, and it would project. You know, you'd see your beam uh, from your, the light from your flashlight right there. Take you a sharpie and put a mark where where your uh, uh, where the light is coming coming through that hole. And it seems like about a half inch hole works pretty good for giving you a little bit of movement, you know, a little bit of wiggle room, but not anything too excessive uh, to where it kind of looks odd or whatever. So, and you could take a knife or, or an X-Acto knife or anything, kind of, you know, um, sort of chain for that, you know, kind of angle it to match the the straw going down into the, uh, into the cover. So let me get, uh, let me get my camera resituated here and I'll show you what it looks like all together. Okay. Now that I have the cover back on the, uh, auto trickler and my, um, my auto throw installed on it, uh, let's put this back together. Uh, so here's my disc and I'm going to, t to attempt to do this. Oh, good. It went all the way down. Uh, Sometimes working around a tripod is a little tricky with the camera. So, and you know, these, these pieces do not have to be like overly tight. I'm just holding the, uh, the pulley. As you can see, it, it spins there. So I'm just holding it and just, you know, lightly finger tighten that. Uh, let's see. And now I'm using the, uh, the kernel side uh you know as you know there's a there's a notch on there you want uh, another easy way to remember it if you're using stick powders you want the little um set screw here to be at the nine o'clock position so this is how that's how to um uh, it'll go on with the screw left of center on the uh, on that piece and of course you got your little um uh, your little nut that keeps that held down and again you know just just snug you know tighten it down you don't have to like, you know, torque it to a hundred foot pounds or nothing like that. So now let's sit this back in. All right. And that is kind of what you will, what you would have. Let me zoom in here a little bit. If, uh, if you drill a one half inch hole, um, and do a little bit of, uh, you know, contouring, there a little bit but i think that looks about right and it gives you a little bit of movement around if you if you need it so um so far pretty happy with that okay now for the good part so here's the hopper for the trickler and as you can see it's uh completely empty got no powder in it and the reason i'm making a point of this is uh i want to show you one really cool thing about this so you lift up on the on the little arm here and again, this is, I'm making this look a lot harder than it is because I'm trying not to knock the camera over at the same time. Uh, okay, so um, what um, Paul at Ingenuity Precision said in his videos is you don't want over 100 grains of powder in the hopper. And I've found that really about 80 uh, seems to be plenty. So uh, my target charge here was 41.6. I had been dispensing a, a little bit prior to this so let me uh what i normally do is i'll just uh i'll dump about two powder charges in there but watch what happens after that th it's primed like you know uh if you've got an original v3 
you know how long it takes the tube to to prime when you first put powder in it or whatever this thing's already it, it, it's already primed um check out whoop huh, sorry bad cameraman here you can see the kernels of powder are already already all the way up to the to the drop point and um uh, i mean it is just there's no waiting on it <laughs> there's practically no waiting on anything on this system i mean it, it is pretty pretty remarkable all right so my target charge was 41.6 and this is vitivori n150 which is one of the more problematic powders i hear uh, because the kernel sizes they can be very inconsistent so 41.58 and it has been my experience that it either drops one kernel of light or dead on the money. Um, it is pretty dang remarkable. There we go. Six, 60. And I was told by Ingenuity Precision uh, that you want the motor to run on the uh, trickler you want it to run briefly on its high speed so set your thrower to dump a little more than a grain light uh from your target charge he said you want to hear the motor run fast for just a split second and then start ramping down he said it seems like it just gives more the system just gives more consistent results that way Oh, you know what? Let me time this because um, I'm pretty sure it's only about 10 seconds from the time I take my hand off the pan to when it's finished. So after this charge is done, I'm going to go get my little timer and we're going to try a couple. Okay, so I got my little timer here. I'm going to do this two ways. Uh, one is going to be the real world time. So the timer starts as soon as you take your hand off the pan which is not really fair to the to the Ingenuity trickler because, you know, it don't start running until the auto trickler software tells it to. And then we will start the timer as soon as I see the uh, auto throw move and the system start working. So let's go. Look at that. Nine seconds. Let me see if I can reset that. Here we go again, real world. Again, eight, nine seconds, eight seconds. And that's, you know, as soon as I take the hand, my hand off the pan, the timer starts. Oh, whoops, I forgot to. Now here, we'll do this. I forgot to reset this, this timer. Thirteen seconds that time. Oh, reset. Twelve seconds that time. I mean, it is, it is crazy fast. All right. So now let's do it. Uh, sort of like a, you know the new super trickler that's coming out. Uh, it times its throws, and but it doesn't start the timer until the system actually begins to dispense. So if it lags, and when you set the cup down on the scales, it takes it four seconds to, to begin, it doesn't count that four seconds. It just shows you the time it took it to dispense, um, you know, once the system started. So let's do, let's do that same thing with the ingenuity here. Eight seconds. I'm trying to start the timer on the gun as best I can. 
nine seconds. And again, I could probably make this go faster. I've just not really seen the need to push it any faster. Because I know I couldn't keep up with it the way I load as is. And so right there was another four or five charges. And as you can see, out of all the charges that we threw, we only had one go to 41.62. All the rest of them have either been 58, you know, 0.58 or 0.60, which is remarkable. I mean, you're only talking about one kernel of powder difference pretty much, which, and even, even if you only had two kernels, I mean, that's not, that's not that big of a deal, but the cool thing about this system is it's faster and more accurate all at the same time. So let's throw one or two more and just see if it makes a liar out of me. I mean, again, all day long, this is what you've got. There it is again. So, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty, pretty dang impressed with this thing. It's, uh, it's pretty ingenious. And, uh, the, the only, uh, hiccups that I've had with it so far move the camera around is i have noticed the occasionally the motor will bind up kind of kind of getting a hard spot and uh i was talking to paul about about this paul is the you know the owner of ingenuity precision and on especially on this powder on vitivory n150 there are some the, he said the kernels were very inconsistent on this powder, and I mean, he's right. Uh, so what will happen is sometimes if you get a, an oversized kernel that won't fit in the little slots in the plate, it'll kind of bind the system up. But all you got to do is even if it's running and you kind of hear it bind up, all, it, all it's doing is it'll be just spinning the little O-ring on the pulley down there. Like, it's not really hurting anything. But all you got to do is lift this little arm, and when you do this, you completely disconnect the motor from the from the actual trickler and if you if you do that and then just kind of back the wheel up a little bit like go the other way most of the time it frees itself up and then it's fine again and what's kind of funny is after you've dispensed after you've run all the powder down out of the hopper on the trickler um you'll see the kernels that are too big. It sorts them, you know, it's like, because there'll be like maybe eight or 10 of them in there that it won't pick up. It don't matter how long it runs. It'll never take them all the way up there to the drop tube. And those are the kernels that are odd sized. So it's, it's kind of, it's kind of funny at the end, you kind of culled the bad kernels out or whatever, which I just dump them back into the, uh, back into my actual hopper. And, you know, I just let the auto throw, throw those, but uh, that's, uh, that's what happened when I ran all the powder out of the trickler, which as you can see right now, I still got, still got a little ways to go in there and that, and like, that's what I mean. I mean, 80 grains, golly, I don't know how many, how many rounds you can load with that, but you know, all you got to do is just ever so often, um, whoop, there went the camera again, sorry. Uh, ever so often just, uh, take a charge and, and dump in there, you know, after you've loaded like 70 or 80 charges, just, you know, give it, I usually just, as soon as the auto throw drops, I'll just stop the system by lifting the pan. I'll dump, dump that charge in there and sit it, sit it back, uh, on the scale and it just takes off again. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy with it. Um, the only, um, I really don't see too many downsides with it. I mean, it's it's pretty killer. Other other than you have to take you know your your old auto trickler apart, you have to take the stepper motor off of it and put it on there. But I mean, that's not too big of a deal. It's just four little Phillips head screws and one one Allen screw, I think, and then you put it on 
put it on the um, in, uh, precision ingenuity base here and and you're off off and running you know the the hardest thing probably is just drilling your hole in the right place but that's really not that big of a deal either if you do the flashlight trick like i was uh, uh telling you about so again thanks for watching and i'm excited to to keep using this thing i'm gonna um i'm gonna probably load quite a few hundred rounds with it here before too long and um maybe try some different powders and use some of the uh the different discs that it comes with um he sends you a, a list and and three discs so yeah this one is the uh 508 and then the uh 7545 this is the one for like varget size and h4895 and n140 all those kind of powders i can't remember what the 508 is let's see here's the the piece of paper he sends you with it uh the 508 is for like h1000 and that size powder and there is another disc that I'm going to be getting eventually, this uh, 705 for uh, powder the size of like CFE-223, which is super fine powder. I do use that a little bit here and there. But um, yeah, for the for the most part, the three discs that he sends you with it is going to, going to cover you pretty well. Um, unless you're planning on throwing a lot of ball powder you'd want to go ahead and order that disc number 705. This is what happens when you get down to the very last little bit, and those are the bad kernels that no matter what, they will never make it in there. Uh, this time I only had, uh, I thought I had a few more than just that. I believe there's maybe two in there, two or three. That might only be one. I think it is just one. Well, you know, anyway, I have seen about as many as eight or ten of them in there that it just will not pick them up because they're just a little out of spec, you know, a little a little longer than the average um, kernel. So uh, that's what will happen if, um, uh, you know, if, if it binds up or or whatever that's that's the issue and lots of times it'll even like just ever so slightly raise this uh raise the hopper out of the stand it's it's real obvious that you know it's there's something in there that it don't like but again not a big deal you can just uh you know lift that little arm that disconnects as you can see it doesn't stop the motor from spinning it just disconnects the uh, the little uh, wheel over there from turning the the big wheel on the uh, powder measure so